welcome to episode 30 of My Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I want to make a start on the accessories for the guest bedroom. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is actually make a chair to go with the dressing table and I found this old Mini Mundus kit that I must have had for a good sort of 15 years. It was before I was making my own furniture and I started off with a few of these kits. I only ever made, I made one of these chairs and I think a wardrobe as well and I'm sure you've heard of these Mini Mundus kits but they're really nice kits, the pieces are always really nicely cut and they're easy to put together as well. So I've just gone through and checked against the list that I've got all of the parts and I was actually missing um, the chair part, so I've just cut that from 1.5 millimeter abishi. But I've got all of the other bits, and I'm not doing the one with the arms. I don't want the carver chair. I'm just doing the plain chair. And then you've got this lovely little detailed back piece, which has been laser cut. I really like that, and I think that will really suit the style of the bedroom as well. So with all of these kits, the first thing you need to do is go through and just very gently sand all of the pieces. Now it does actually recommend using a 240 grade sandpaper in the kit, but I'm actually just using my 500. I'm just going through and giving it a really gentle sand. And then these back legs, which are shaped, one of them was a little bit thicker at the top, than the other so I've just again with the 500 just sort of gone through and just narrowed that down a little bit just really by supporting it with my finger and just going over the same place over and over until it's sort of as thin as the other one so although all the pieces are really nicely cut you sometimes you will find little sort of discrepancies like that so just check everything you've got first of all and that anything in pairs they do actually match and I'm just going to start by giving these little Queen Anne legs a sand as well. And I'm going to be painting mine using the little um, paint pot that I mixed for the other bedroom pieces, the pale grey and white. And I'll use some of that um, fabric that I printed as well for the seat. And I might even make an extra little crochet cushion to go on it. Plenty of that lovely teal coloured crochet cotton left. So once you've sanded all of the pieces, just go over with a nice soft brush and get rid of the sanding dust. So I've made a start on putting it together and again they're really easy to construct as well and you get sort of full set of instructions which are really easy to follow. And the other thing I'm actually missing, I've noticed, is the cardboard and the foam for the seat. So I must have used those for another project for some reason. But obviously I've got a bit of cardboard and a bit of foam I can use. So I'll go and find that out now while these pieces are sort of roughly drying. And then I can continue with the construction. So there's the chair. I think that's really pretty. Where I cut my... Um, bottom chair piece there, the piece that I said was missing. I think I've cut the sides too much at an angle because when I fitted the leg, though it was straight along the front edge, I had a little bit overhanging at the side and you can still see a little bit there. So I cut another just really thin strip of wood to go along there just to bring that angle out and I've done that on both sides. And then when the glue has completely dried, I'll sand all of these corners round and sand the side of that leg so that I've got a nice flush corner there. And I'll do that on both sides. And then I've cut my piece of card for the cushion. And when you're doing that, always just leave a little bit of a border around the outside edge and that will allow you then to tuck your fabric around so that that will fit nicely back into place. And I'll actually be using a little bit of wadding um, for the seat to give it a bit of a cushion. And then I've got some of that um, fabric left that I printed. So I'm gonna be using that for the cushion. So I'm looking forward to doing that. But first of all, obviously I've got to paint that. So once that's dry and I've made those adjustments, I can apply a coat of paint and we'll get this done hopefully later on today. Okay, so the chair 
has now completely dried. I'm just starting the painting and I've been around and sanded the legs flat so I've now got a nice smooth piece. What I also did was just went over the corners of the seat there just to round them off a little bit and get rid of those sharp corners. So I'm really pleased with that. Now I'm starting the painting and I've got a lovely soft flat brush here which will work nicely between all these little shaped areas. And as I said, I'm using the paint that I mixed myself for my um, guest bedroom furniture. And it's just a really sort of pale silvery grey mixed with a white emulsion. And it just takes that sort of bright white edge off. I don't know about you, but I'm not keen on just sort of pure white furniture. And I think you don't get a very nice finish with it either. I don't know, perhaps that's just me. I'm not sure why why white wouldn't give a really nice finish. Maybe because it just shows up every little, um, you know, bit of grain in the wood and everything. But anyway, this has got a little bit of silvery grey mixed with it, which picks out a very sort of pale grey um, feather design in the wallpaper. So that's why I chose the grey. So that's now had one coat all over, apart from the top of the seat, which will obviously be covered. But when you're doing something that's got all these little sort of intricate bits, it's a really good idea then to, after you've done the first coat, go over with a soft brush and just wipe it into all those little areas. And that will get rid of any congealed paint. And then you can still see all those lovely patterns in there. You can sand as well once the paint has completely dried, but it's a good idea to do it at this stage as you can remove it more easily. Okay, so I'm now going to leave that to dry and it's half past five now, so I'll leave that overnight and then in the morning I'll give it a gentle sand, a light second coat and then we can do the upholstery, which I'm really looking forward to. So I'll see you in the morning. So my chair has had two coats of paint I sanded lightly after each coat and I now want to upholster the little seat cushion so I just pop that to one side and I'm going to begin by applying double sided tape to each side of my piece of card. So to cushion the seat I'm using this wadding and this is the sort of thing that's used for patchwork quilts just to add a bit of padding to the patchwork sections. So let me just trim a piece off of there. And this is actually half a piece that I've just cut off. It's quite thick for 112 scale so what I usually do is sort of pull it in half and I've already done this piece and then you get a piece that looks to scale for your piece of furniture. So begin by removing the double sided backing just from one side of your little cushion, of your piece of card rather. Like that. And then stick that to your wadding. Like that. And the reason I use double sided tape rather than glue, especially for wadding, is that when the glue dries you just tend to get little hard lumps in the wadding. So if you just use tape like this it stays nice and soft and cushiony. And then trim around the outside edge. Cut a piece of your fabric so that you've got a border of about 12mm 
or half an inch around each edge. And then remove the backing tape. Can't get hold of it. And then begin by pulling in the sides. Nice and firmly, but not too tightly because we don't want to distort the piece of card. And that side as well. Dispense a little piece of glue onto your card and I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue. It works really well with fabric. And we're going to glue that little back flap down first. So put a little bit of glue on the back of the seat cushion like that. I'm just going to put a little piece inside, or a little bit inside the fabric as well. And then fold that over. Press it down. And then use your scissors just to snip away the excess fabric at the front. So come across at a diagonal like that. Snip away those corners of those flaps. Like that. And then you want to, I'll do it before I put the glue on, you want to bring the corners in like that. And we're sort of going to concertina them in underneath the cushion. So we're going to create two little triangle corners at each side like that. So just apply glue along the front edge of the card. And you've got a little bit of double sided tape there but you need to put it onto the edges of the fabric as well. So bring that in like that, creating that little flap on the inside. And it's really just so that none of that is overhanging at the front of the seat. We'll have that nice edge along the front there. Give it a good squeeze down. Little back flaps coming on glue, so I'll put a bit more glue in there. Press it all down again. I'm going to trim those little front flaps off. Make sure you're not going too close to the front edge of the seat. And then you can just work in a little bit of glue to glue down any fabric that's still loose. Now I know whenever I do upholstery people say about cutting little triangles into the fabric and if you like to do it that way then please do. I'm not keen on doing it that way because I always find that the point of the triangle frays and you can then see little gaps at the front of your seat where you don't want to see them. So I prefer just to fold it over and hide it all away underneath the seat and just cut bits away as you're doing it sort of thing so that you're the front of your cushion like that is nice and neat so while the glue is still wet I'm going to bring the chair in and we can actually glue this into place so I'm going to apply glue actually into the opening part there and you've got that nice little ridge around the edge Put it right along the edges. Don't want our cushion to be lifting up. And then put your little seat cushion into place. Push it down so that it's fitting right into the little sort of slotted area. Squeeze the fabric out like that so that you're really spreading it out and not leaving any gaps. And then I don't like to use clamps when I'm sort of clamping down 
anything with fabric on. So I'm just going to use my fingers just to press it into place and keep doing that until the glue has begun to take rather than clamping it down, which can actually dent the wadding. And you'll have sort of little dents in your cushion. I quite like that with the, the colour of the chair. Looks really nice and subtle. I think it does need a scatter cushion, so I'll make another little crocheted cushion to go on there in that lovely teal green, just to stand up at the back there. So that the lady of the house will be comfortable, or the guest will be comfortable when she's applying her makeup. Hmm. Like that, and I'm really looking forward to actually going and trying that in front of the dressing table. So let's do that now. There's the chair in place and I've just pinched that cushion from the bed but I will make another one because I think that looks quite pretty on there and I think that room's starting to look really nice now. So the next thing I want to do is make a little dressing table mirror and I'm going to follow the tutorial in my book Step by Step Doll's House Furniture Projects in 112 Scale. You may even have a copy of this one. And I'm just going to adapt it slightly to make mine slightly smaller and I want it to be the same width as the moulding there so that that will sit nice and centrally on the top of the dressing table there. And because it's going to be a bit smaller I'm just going to make the base and then make a little fold straw to go on the front. And then once I've made the base I can work out the size that I need the mirror to be and cut my mirror sheet accordingly. And this is a mirrored acetate so it's not actual mirror so it's nice and easy to cut. So there's the little draw part of the mirror and I used 1.5 millimeter sheet wood for the actual main body of the draw part so that's just like a little box in the center there and then I used 0.8 millimeter sheet wood for the top and the bottom beveled over each side and then 0.8 again for the draw and a little cocktail stick there for the draw knob. So that piece is now ready for paint. Pop that over there. And then I've also cut the frame for the mirror and I've used 1.5 millimeter strip for that, 1 16th of an inch, just to make it look a little bit less chunky. And these are also now ready to paint. So for these, I've just put a bit of um, masking tape on my card here, sticky side up, and then you can just stick those against it and just paint the three sides and then the back will be the plain side. So whilst that paint's drying, I've just been through my little box of accessories and taken out a few bits that I think I can use in the guest bedroom. And this lovely little ornament here I've had, again in my collection for quite a few years, I think it was one of the first sort of little ornaments that I bought. And pink is a really nice contrasting colour with green. So I think that will look really nice. And then a little um, jar of bath salts. Here I've got this little pot and I've just rolled up some tiny little pieces of cotton wool to look like cotton wool balls in there and I'll fix that little lid on before we put that into place. And then this little um, green jar I got from somewhere and it arrived damaged but I thought rather than send it back I'll keep hold of it and I can just position that so that the little damaged part is at the back. I've got a little um, picture frame here with one of our wedding photos in it and the frame was originally gold and I just painted that using um, white emulsion paint and then fitted the little picture in and then these bits were out of a little Reuter porcelain um, bathroom set but I just thought the colours on those are really nice so I might be able to do something with those on the dressing table and then for some reason I've only taken out the little silver hand mirror but I have got a little silver set of a, a brush and a comb and the mirror and they're on a little tray but I, I don't think I'll use them because I think they look a little bit too 
traditional and I want it to look more like a modern bedroom. So I'll pop that back in. But I'm pleased with these little bits here. And I also want to make some pieces as well. I want to make some fabric covered books and we'll have a couple of books in there as well that could go under the bedside cabinets. And I also want to make some little cardboard memory box type things. So we'll do that as well. So there's my little dressing table mirror. I'm really pleased with that. And I've just put a couple of things on the dressing table at the moment, but I haven't stuck anything down. I was just sort of having a play around. And I now want to have a go at making a box of tissues. And Kleenex have got this range of Art Deco boxes, and I think they're really nice. So I went online and I put in pink Art Deco pattern, and I found this. And I've scaled it right down. It's actually some little pink shells. And this measures about two and a half inches square or 65 millimeters square. And I'm going to use it to cover a little block of wood to make a tissue cube. So for the wood, I'm using three pieces of three millimeter thick wood. And I've cut them into nine millimeter squares or three eighths of an inch. And I'm now going to glue them together to make a little box which is nine millimeters square or three eighths of an inch square. So I'm just pop a little bit of glue onto the first one. And don't worry if they're not all exactly the same size. It's very difficult to cut pieces exactly the same by hand. And what we'll actually then do is sand it once it's completely dried into a nice little flush square which we can then use our paper to cover. Don't want to stick it to the work tool. I should have my tweezers really. Let me get hold of that with my tweezers. Make it a little bit easier. Straighten that up. Put a little bit more glue on there. Pop that one on. Square them up, squeeze them together, and then I'm just going to grab a clamp. Make sure they're staying square. And then just pop a clamp on there, like that, and that can then be left to dry. So once your little wooden cube has dried, sand that on all edges to get a nice little flush cube. And then cut a piece of your paper so that it will wrap around the cube. And then you've got a bit of a border at the top and bottom that we can then fold in. So about half the width again you want to leave as the border. So apply glue around the edges of the cube. that down in the centre of your paper there, centre from top to bottom. And I've probably got a bit too much there but we can trim a little bit off and then wrap it round like that and then trim so you've got a little bit of an overlap at the back. creasing in the corners there and then you want to snip down each of those corners at the top and bottom and then where we've got the join, that will become the back of the box, so that will be hidden. So these front flaps we want to fold down last to give us a nice neat front edge. So we'll start with the sides. So fold, or maybe apply a bit of glue to the 
the wood first. And flap out of the way. Fold the first flap down. A bit more glue. Now I'm just going to snip a bit off the flap at the back. I'm going to come in a little triangle as well. I should have done that before I put the glue on, but just snip it into a little triangle so you can't see the side folds. And the same with that front piece. Very slight angle at each side of the flap. And then glue that down. And then you want to do the same thing again at the other side. You can just neaten up those edges before the glue dries. So you've got any little ridges there, just smooth them out with your fingers. And then just cut a tiny little square from a tissue. Trim that down a bit. And then pull it in half. So you've just got one ply, otherwise it looks a little bit out of scale. And then sort of pinch it in the middle, fold it up into a little fan shape, I suppose. Bit of glue on top of the box in the centre. and then glue that on. Then we have our little cube tissue box. Now I'm not going to glue or stick down any of the accessories yet just because I'll make a few more bits and then I'll know how to display them but I do actually want to glue the mirror into place. Now if you don't want to use glue then just use your tacky wax and I like to secure things because I don't like when you're sort of moving things around that they keep, um, you know, things keep falling off. And I know there's a bit of a debate about whether to permanently secure things or not, but I won't be moving this mirror or redisplaying the dressing table. So I know I'm sort of fairly safe just sort of gluing it down and making it into one piece. So I'm just sort of lining it up by eye there. Make sure those central knobs are lined up and then just give that a gentle press down. Now I know I can move this around without fear of dropping the little mirror. And I'll be securing the miniatures to the top with a mixture of tacky wax and glue. The sort of cardboardy things that I've made I'll, I'll glue down. And the glass jars I'll use a bit of tacky wax. Make sure that's straight along that back edge as well, which it is. Okay, so now I want to have a go at making a few toiletries and also a little makeup bag. So I want to have a go at a little no sew makeup bag. So I've got this nice pink fabric here. And I'm going to use a template as you would use for making a cardboard box or something like that. So I've got my sides here and I've left a little bit for a hem to fold over so we don't get any fraying. Like that and then my sides will fold in and I've left little tabs to glue it all together and again I've got a little um, hem on the side bit as well. So I'm really just making like a, a tall narrow box. You see like that and I'm sure you've all made little boxes and things like that using this sort of template. And I'm just having it 19 millimeters wide which is um, three quarters of an inch 
by, I think I did it 12 millimetres high, did I, or was it 10? Yeah, 12 millimetres high, so half an inch high. So that would give me a makeup bag of nine inches by six inches high. So a large sort of travel makeup bag, which I thought was appropriate for the guest bedroom. And then I'll either try and make a little pretend zip using a piece of ribbon or something, or I might just put a little um, bead in there to look like a little button. So it would sort of push together like that. But I haven't tried this before, so let's see how this works. So begin by creating your template on a piece of paper and then transfer that onto the back of your fabric. Just to sort of get the size like that and then you can go along and freehand in your little seams and things. And that went right down like that, so we've got those flaps. And then cut that out. So fold over along each of the lines to create a little crease in the fabric and then begin by gluing down the little hemmed areas. I've just left a two mil hem, two millimeter hem along each edge. I'm using my Gorilla Glue for this, which I find works really well with fabric. And then what I've got here is a little bit of card which is the same size as the base and I've made the base six millimetres wide or made the bag six millimetres wide so a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to glue that into place right in the centre there and then my bag will stand up but also make it a little bit more sturdy. So glue that into place in there. Make sure you're getting it right in the middle there or it will distort the shape of the bag. Just press that down. I'm just going to leave that to dry and that's good timing because my battery's just started flashing. So I'll go and change that and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm now going to start putting it together. So begin by applying glue to those little flaps on the side of the bag there, just folding them in a bit. And then push that in, bring up those first sides. it together. You're getting some nice sort of square corner seams. And do the same at the other side. A little bit more tricky this time because you haven't got as much room to work in. Bring that in as well. And tweezers could help here to sort of press the fabric together on the inside. Again, square up those corners. And then what I want to do is just crease in there and press it together. 
I'm just pushing in that side. Oops, sorry, I didn't realise I wasn't on the camera then. So push in the side, make a little bit of a indentation, and then press it in. We've got more of a sort of little triangle makeup bag. Oops. I normally drop things like that and drop them in the glue, so that was lucky. So I don't want that to actually stick together, I just want it so that we can display it that way. Okay, so just let that dry off for a moment. And I'm going to have a think about that little zip, so let me have a look in my little box of trimmings. So I just want something that will resemble a zip, and I'm sure I've got something gold in here. A little bit of braid there. Ah, Yes, that's it, that's what I was thinking of. So I've got this gold sort of braid. I thought I might just glue a little bit of that along the inside on each edge of the bag, just to resemble a zip. It doesn't look like one at all close up, but just glued on the inside there. It will just give the indication of a little zip bag. So we'll do that. Yeah, just a little box where I keep all cord, ribbon, lots of different sort of trimmings. And I, I love going through here, sorting through here when I need something. A little bit of lace there. Nice fine cord as well, actually rigging cord. That's nice for smaller projects. Christmas baubles too. <laughs> it's surprising what you build up and then you forget that you've actually got it, isn't it? Got some little buckles in there as well. Right, okay, put that away. So just open the back out. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue along each top edge like that and then just cut a piece of this to length get rid of that frayed end can't see which side I put the glue now and just glue that on the inside edge I'm not sure it really does look like a zip, but it's, if not, it's just a nice little bit of trim. <laughs> and we'll have things stood in here as well, so I'll hide that. Partly obscure it sort of thing, you know. I just wanted to see a little bit of gold glint in there that looked zip-like. But you could just put a little button in the centre of that inside edge. Some of them just sort of um, clip together, don't they? Like a big popper or something. I think that could look like a zip from a distance. Okay, now let's make some things to go inside. So what I want to do is make a couple of large makeup brushes that I'll have then angled and sticking out of the bag. And I've got here a couple of old brushes and I've had them for so long and I've washed them and washed them, but when you keep doing that, they do tend to go a little bit hard on the ends. So hence I've replaced them and these have ended up in my bits box. And I've got another one there out of the um, little blusher set that I've never actually used. So I want to do two large brushes like this, but one with the black bristles and one with the brown bristles. So for the handles of the brushes we're going to use cocktail sticks and we're going to begin by cutting the pointed end off of two sticks. So it helps if you roll the cocktail stick along 
under the blade of your knife. And then we're going to round over each of those ends using a piece of fine grade paper. So just twist the cocktail stick around in your hand and sweep the paper over the top until you've rounded it off. Like that. And we're then going to paint those and I'm going to paint mine black. And the reason I've left them long like this is so that you've got something to hold on to whilst you paint the end. And we're only actually going to be cutting about 15 millimetres or 5 eighths of an inch from this end of the cocktail stick. Just prop that on there to dry. Make that one to dry as well. And whilst they're drying, I'm going to go and print off some labels for some toiletries. So I've printed off here some labels, some hair care products and a couple of my favourite perfumes and I've done a whole video on creating food packets, tins and jars and I show you how to not only print and resize the labels but also how to then make them up into packages. So my perfume bottle labels, I'll be wrapping around some little pieces of wood which I've cut to size and then for the um, spray bottles I use in dowels so I've painted the ends for the lids of the spray cans and then I'll wrap these around and then cut those to size so do have a look at that um, video it's here on the channel I think it's just called food packets tins and jars okay so that's the toiletries done and I haven't glued them into place yet I've just stood them there for now and now I want to make the brushes so lay the cocktail stick alongside your rule and we're going to trim it to 15 millimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. Another way. So again, roll it along your work surface and cut at the same time. <laughs> In fact, it's, it might be better to cut from that way so you're actually holding on to the piece you want to keep. Just in case it sort of pings off and into a little corner. You might never find it again. Okay, like that. So bring in your brush and then apply a little dot of glue to the end of one of the handles. And then I've got a paint pot here that I'm just going to rest that on while I cut off a few bristles. So get hold of a few and they've only got to sit on the top of the cocktail stick so you don't want too many and we're going to cut them longer than we need because then we're going to trim them to size. I want it to look quite thick so I'm getting a good little sort of bundle there and I'm going to cut that about as long as my thumbnail there. I don't know, about half an inch maybe. <laughs> Never actually measured it. <laughs> so cut those off like that. Keep them in the little tight bundle. If you can push them in further all the better. And then bring in your cocktail stick and just sort of push it into the bunch of bristles. And I'm pressing those into place. And we will lose a few. You want to get as many as you can to stick on to the end of the cocktail stick there. Gently sort of tap, I'm only tapping my finger there. So then lay that onto your paint pot to dry. And then we can do the same with the other one. Little dot of glue. And then take a few bristles from the other brush. Go from one end there. I won't take as many this time. Snip those off. And then press them against the end of the cocktail stick. Let the excess go. Don't knock those off. And we'll tidy, we can tidy that up once they've dried into place a little bit better and then prop that one to dry as well. 
So for the little bit that goes below the bristles, I've got this gold foil. And it's about the thickness of aluminium foil or aluminium foil. And I've cut a couple of strips here that are four millimetres or three sixteenths of an inch thick. And then I've, I haven't measured them, but they're probably about an inch and a quarter long, or 30 millimetres long. So bring in your first brush and just begin by sort of tapping away the excess bristles. Anything that isn't stuck will come off. And you can sort of tidy them up a bit by squeezing them in. And then we can apply a little bit of glue to the foil. I don't know why I'm turning it over though. I don't think there's a right and a wrong side. So I'm not going to need to go all the way along. So just do a little bit at the beginning there like that. And then stick that so it's sort of halfway over the cocktail stick and halfway over the bristles. And then roll that around. Press it really tightly and I'm going to go around for as far as I've sort of glued. I don't want to let go of it in case it unfoils but just sort of pull it nice and tight. And then you can trim that off. Use your nail to make it as tight as you can. You can then press and hold that into place while the glue begins to dry. And then you can trim off the excess bristles and you want them to be probably about three or four millimetres long again. So the same sort of width as your gold band. Trim them so they're nice and even. Okay, and I've got my giant scissors here, I should be using the smaller ones. Like that, and then that can go into the little makeup bag. And then do the same with your first brush. So I'm now going to start attaching these few bits into place and I've got here my tacky wax which I've only got a tiny little bit left of but this pot has lasted me for probably near on 10 years so one pot really does go a long way and I've got a little bit of glue here as well for the bits that I want to actually stick into place but I'm going to start with the tacky wax and with those glass jars And the Gorilla Glue will stick glass down, but as long as it's got a flat bottom. If you've got anything with a little bit of a ridge in it, then obviously it won't stick because it hasn't got anything to, to sort of grab hold of. I'll start with that at the back there. I'm going to have to turn around a bit because I can't actually see through the camera because the sun in here is so bright. So let me come around like that. <laughs> And when you're using tacky wax, you really do just need a little tiny bit. Not only is it just, you know, super um, sticky, but you don't want to be able to see it from beneath the piece that you're attaching. And on here as well, I'm also going to use a little bit of tacky wax to secure the lid into place. And again, it's just because I don't want to be moving things around at some point in the future and then find that the lid flies off. Just put a little bit of tacky wax around the inside of the rim there. Yeah, going back to what I was saying, using too much tacky wax on a piece can really ruin a display when you can see a sort of big, um, you know, blob of tacky wax sticking out from beneath the miniature. So you really do only need a little tiny bit. And then I want to put a little bit on the bottom there as well. And that can go there. And then for the tissues I can use a little bit of glue. Again, don't apply too much glue because you don't want it coming out around the sides. And 
again I was just checking for the nicest side of the um, tissue box there because have a think as well of what angle you'll be looking in the doll's house towards the piece at so I'll be coming in from this sort of corner here this will be flat against the side wall put the tacky wax over there I think I can use glue for these pieces now but I just want to grab my tweezers again And I want to make a little lamp for this, the right hand corner of this dressing table. But I'm going to be making lamps in a future episode for the um, bedside cabinet, so I'll do it all at the same time. So I'm going to stick that one there. And because it's going in front of the mirror, I'm sticking it back as far as I can so that you can't actually see the back of the box through the mirror. A little. Uh, Jimmy Choo perfume as well. Oh, it's picked up the wrong cocktail stick there. Still have a bit of tacky wax on it. Let me move that hairspray out of the way. I don't know about you, but when I'm doing um, displays like this, whether it's toiletries or food packets, I always like to choose things that I, I actually have in my house. So toiletries I like, or food that I enjoy. Always choose something that's sort of personal to you, that actually means something. Because you can go on and find, obviously, um, oh, I've already stuck that one down. You can go on and um, find pictures of anything you know but try to choose something that is personal to you or that means something to you these are all toiletries that I use perfume that I like So let me just have a look. I was going to have the hairspray just at the back there. And then I want the little makeup bag on there. And I'm running out of time in this episode, but I also want to do some little bits of makeup to actually put on the main part of the dressing table there. So we'll do some eyeshadows and some um, blusher and things like that to go on there and I've had some ideas of how to do those so we will come back to the um, bedroom accessories when I worked in a chemist back in the sort of early 90s Elnet hairspray was so popular at the time we used to sell loads of it <laughs> I don't actually use hairspray anymore but I used to use Elnet but it also reminds me of working at the chemist, so that's why I've chosen that one. And then I actually want to um, glue the brushes into the bag. And to do that, I'm going to put a little bit of tacky wax into the bottom of the bag. I put that little bit of card in there, if you remember, so I can stick a bit of tacky wax to that and then display those brushes at, at angles. The tail stick just broke in half. So I'm putting sort of quite a big blob in there, sticking it down to that card, and then I can put the brushes in. And again, always always choose the nicest sort of side of the miniature that you're displaying. And I'm hiding the join of the gold foil at the back there. bit of glue on the bottom of there. And that piece of card in the bottom there will really help you press it down. Oh, and it feels so good to be able to move it around without it all falling, <laughs> falling off. So I now want to go and see what that looks like in situ 
and with a little chair in front of it as well. So there's the dressing table back in place and I think that looks really nice. I like the angle of everything there and the little lamp that I want in the corner will fill that area out as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for today, but I just wanted to quickly show you my design for the guest bedroom wardrobe. And this is very similar to the first wardrobe I ever made, in that it's got these lovely fabric panels in the doors, and for that I'll be using that lovely teal green silk that I used for the headboard. A couple of drawers down here, and I'll also use those little drop handles that we used on the chest of drawers. And I've done a sort of alternative bottom part down here, so I'll either make some feet using part of a stair spindle or newel post, or I'll do a, like a moulded or shaped bottom part down there. I'm not too sure yet, so I've done sort of both designs. But this will be the next tutorial coming up on the channel, and that will be sometime in April. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode and that a few of those pieces have given you some ideas for your own doll's house. Now coming up next will be a tutorial for the wardrobe that I spoke about. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye! <laughs>